Marilyn, you have a very broad and rich understanding of consciousness, which is very compelling and perhaps very meaningful in the world. So let's look at that and ask the simple question, okay then, assuming you're right in this very broad view of consciousness, what are the things that are conscious? What things are conscious? I think to answer that, you have to figure out what are we capable of knowing about consciousness. So on the one hand, you can say it has to be the pieces. It has to be, you know, the ants are conscious and the trees are conscious. But when I think about it, it is a, a whole. And I see consciousness as a process of reflection and correction and calibration and emergence, an emergence towards something. There's a telos that is about, you know, the manifestation of life. And so when I think about it, it's, it's the wholeness of the planet. It's the wholeness of, you know, the particular flora and fauna of the rainforest. It's the wholeness of every living creature that acts in a mindful way in, in a kind of environmental niche that works collaboratively. Now, does that mean that individual entities, um, you said ants, for example, are conscious because they are a small part of a global consciousness of some kind? Or do they have a, uh, an element of consciousness themselves that collectively add together to this whole? Which, yeah, which I way think it's, it it's sort of both for me. I mean, yeah. I don't mean to be panpsychist <laughs> about it, but I do think that consciousness is the whole. It is that frame of organization. And so you can then take the bits. You can say um, a colony of ants have a capacity to be conscious and they work together mm -hmm. toward a particular outcome. Uh, you know, when you watch ants' behavior, they're very intentional. They direct their activities mm -hmm. toward a particular object or outcome. So you would then see <laughs> that there could be, as a subset of this larger consciousness, that the ant colony has a kind of consciousness as well as each individual ant is part of that. Yeah, and when you think about the tremendous diversity of life forms on the planet and how there is this synergistic relationship between the parts, I can see the consciousness of those parts, but for me it makes more sense really to think about the consciousness of the whole. How is it that each of these parts intersects and, you know, entangles itself with the other. Okay, so let's grant that. Let's say there is this whole kind of consciousness which, which exists, perhaps it's in the universe, certainly it's on Earth as you've described it. Now let's look at the pieces. Certainly human beings have conscious, uh, are conscious as part of that, and we, we have this inner first-person subjective sense of experience, what it's like to be me and all that. Uh, how is that then similar or dissimilar as you go down the, the phylogenetic scale? Are, are there primates, uh, cetaceans, dolphins, whales that have very large brains in the sea, other mammals, and then invertebrates, and down we go? How do you see it uh, developing? I think part of the narcissism of the Western worldview is the assumption that we're kind of on the top of some hierarchy. Yeah, I feel that way. Therefore, and you are a <laughs> representative you, of that. Me, on the other <laughs> hand, I have a little more humble view of myself. And and uh, and so when I think about it, I'm aware that... Your humbleness is your arrogance. Well then, okay. Um, how can we be aware that part of the worldview that we have created is one in which we are at the top and we are separate from. So when you start thinking about something like cows, and if you were to accept the idea that, that cows have consciousness, wouldn't that alter your behavior toward cows? That's a good word. You start to see that they're very, you know, social and playful and engaging, and they love to frolic with one another. And I really think if they were smaller, they'd probably be household pets. <laughs> but because our worldview sees humans as the conscious ones, we have created a way in which we can then send the cows to slaughterhouses and eat them without any reflection on the sort of atrocity that we're committing to their consciousness. I'm going to change awareness. my reservations at a restaurant tonight because of I this. would if I were you. I mean, you just think about how in the time of slavery, what we did is we as humans, we constructed categories. 
we with white skin were the ones on the dominant end of this spectrum, and, and those people of color were at the lower end. And they were actually listed in the registries of the plantations as part of the animal life, you know, and so they were logged in with the cattle and the horses and livestock of various types. We had created a worldview that allowed us to sustain a socioeconomic system that ultimately wasn't representative of the, the true essence of their consciousness. People of color have as much consciousness as you know, white folks. And I think it was only as we began to develop a shift in our worldview and our awareness of our common humanity that we were able to sort of you know, eradicate slavery, at least in this country. So applying that principle as you would go down to other mammals, cows you mentioned, there would be real consciousness there, which <clears throat> would alter our sense of things. Now, how far down do you go? I mean, you, you talked about ants, uh, single cell uh, amoeba that, that react to stimuli. I think so. I mean, I would consider that there are different levels of consciousness, different complexities of consciousness, okay. uh, different awareness of our own reflectivity in terms of consciousness. So these are animal lives, and how about when you go to plant life, fauna? Any living form I would consider having some aspect of consciousness. Um, maybe not in isolation, maybe as part of a habitat. Okay and finding the most sustainable way of configuring the diversity within that habitat. So do you, do you divide reality into life and not life and attribute some aspect of consciousness to anything that's alive, but no consciousness whatsoever to anything that's not alive? Well, I think that's a good question. Obviously, you know, we don't have answers to these questions. No, I, They're thoughtful. Sure. Uh, but when I think about it, I can envision the whole planet as being a conscious system. And then thinking about planet Earth in the context of the universe. And then this universe in the context of the many universes. And so the cosmology that we have is one in which there's a full system that calibrates and self-corrects and writes itself. In which case it's all a manifestation of consciousness, awareness, intention, and telos.